An urban designer is somebody who designs parts of the city. He's not actually involved in the design of a specific building or a specific store or office, but it rather has to deal with the, the bigger scale. Is that step up in scale we talked about. And it has to deal with roads and squares and gardens and, and building shapes. But it's kind of some, somehow designing the voids is the gap between the buildings. I think landscape architecture and urban design are the glue to the built environment professions. I think we provide a certain level of cohesion to the streetscape, to the landscape, to the public realm. And often a lot of fragmented schemes or poor planning decisions or um, disquiet between how the built form and the landscape comes together can be resolved by uh, landscape architecture and urban design. The basic difference um, is in the scale really, you know, and also there's a, there's a difference in time. So you would think that a building takes about two years, two to three years to be completed. Once you do a master plan for a small part of London, you know that those differences, those drawings will be only implemented in like five to ten years time. So you, can, you bear an important responsibility. You'll be designing for generation ahead. Is the consciousness that you're designing for people. It's about drawing lines for people. So whatever your sketch is showing is something people are going to live in, going to have every day, going to react, interact with. Um, so you always ask yourself the question, what's this place going to be like? You know, how are people going to love this little square? You know, how are the trees going to respond during spring? You know, is that bench nice enough for, for, for kids to play around? Or for an old man to just sit there with a dog? So it's designing for people. I think it's definitely working with nature. I think it's uh, anyone that, even when I was doing garden maintenance, uh, plants a tree realizes that in a lot of cases that tree will actually outgrow them or that you can go back to it in years time with your children and see something that you've created and there's a greater challenge with working with uh, things that are living than there is with built infrastructure so you have to be aware of the season and how the elements actually affects what you're creating. I spend uh, as much of my time indoors keeping warm. Uh, if I am outside, I'm very well wrapped up. But I think even though when I'm inside, I'm always aware of the light. And the same very special, even in winter when it's very cold, about the type of light. And when you're inside a building, you see the reflections. I think for me, I always have a personal connection to the outside through light. computer is a very, very powerful tool and you just need to know it. You just need to be up to date um, with, with software packages. But then once it becomes your technique, it's like sketching. You could revert easily from sketching, from hand drawing to computer, just depending on the language you want to use for that particular topic. Um, I started with drawing and illustration then eventually go into uh, graphic design and then landed at university in architecture. Um, many of my colleagues had different parts. Some of them were musicians or engineers. So it doesn't really matter how or where you start from. But as I said, you, you need to believe in your dreams and just pursue those. I started in horticulture and then moved through to landscape maintenance and construction and then did a course in garden design and then landscape architecture and from landscape architecture I progressed on to urban design. You have to be good with your imagination. You need to be good at visualising things before they actually happen. That's the key element, it's your imagination. 